conference room number accepted. If you are the organizer, press the star key now. Otherwise, please hold. This line is now muted. This conference will now be recorded. For a menu of available commands, press star 1. There are 19 participants in the conference. In the conference. In the conference. Stephanie, is your computer, are your computer speakers muted? Um, they are, and um, I just see that it's just uh, spinning, so I, I pulled away okay. my phone, and my speakers are, um, are muted. I was checking. Our apologies, everyone. Kim, um, do you see a visual on the screen? Yes, I can. I can. Can you? Um, I cannot. Hmm. Okay. Rhonda, are you seeing the the PowerPoint on the screen? Yeah, I see it just fine. Okay, um, Kim, I'm just going to um, move forward and um, just ask okay. you to slide, advance. Our apologies, everyone. Um, as I was saying, my name is Bethany Adams, and I am Senior Program Manager for the Small Rural Hospital Transition Project. Um, it is my pl pleasure to present today with Kim Norton, the Center's Senior Program Coordinator, and Rhonda Barkas, um, the Senior Center's Program Specialist. Slide two. Um, on today's webinar, we'll present an um, uh, overview of the SHIRT outcomes, illustrate benefits of participation, and Rhonda will share about resources available through the toolkit, explain how the toolkit uh, should be used to support your ongoing financial, operational, and quality improvement initiatives. And um, we'll also highlight self-assessment and how it can support your team and strategy planning. And lastly, just um, share uh, information about the upcoming application process for the 2018-19 program year. Slide three. Uh, some background about the National Rural Health Resource Center. The center is a not-for-profit organization dedicated to sustaining and improving health in rural communities. Uh, we are the nation's leading technical assistance center. Uh, we provide a variety of services to rural hospitals, clinics, their communities across the country, and really focus on transitions to value, uh, preparing for population health, building relationship and um, partnerships, um, supporting performance improvement initiatives, and continuing to support um, HIT and workforce. Slide four. Um, the Small Rural Hospital Transition Project is supported through the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy. A shirt is in the fourth contract year. Um, with the support of the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy, the center administers the SHIRT project as well as other programs your hospitals probably participate in, just such as the Small Hospital Improvement Program, uh, Network Development, Allied Health uh, Grant Program. And we also support the, and provide Technical Assistance Service Center. And that um, service supports the state's FLEX program. So we, su we support um, various educational trainings to small rural hospitals through various uh, mechanisms, um, through the SHIRT project, SHIP, FLEX project, and now recently the Delta Region Community Health Systems Development Program. Slide five, please. So the project is created with, by the federal office to support rural hospital and network leaders with transitioning to value-based system and preparing for population health. SHIRT provides on-site consultation to nine selected hospitals per year and disseminates um, these best practices and successful strategies to rural uh, leaders across the country. Slide six. So in contract year 2017, um, which was 2017-2018 um, um, program year, we just collated some outcome data. So we supported three financial operational assessments and six quality improvement projects. 
Um, and so just to give you a, a feel for the impact, um, two of the FOA hospitals reported that they increased net patient revenue by 7 and 17 percent, increased net income by 18 percent and nearly one doubled, and increased their day's cash on hand by 14 and 10 days. And um, it just does not focus on financial. It has a large focus on patient um, satisfaction, uh, quality, and demonstrating value. Slide seven. Uh, there were uh, six hospitals that completed the quality improvement project. Four were CIHs and two were PPS hospitals. Uh, the two PPS hospitals, one increased um, their HCAP discharge planning composite scores, um, one maintained the high scores, and both of them continued to improve um, their transition of care scores. Flat eight. Of the four CAHs, uh, two of them increased ED2C significantly, uh, two increased their discharge planning, and um, one increased their transition of um, care scores. And we've seen um, slight decreases before. Um, that's, um, we believe that's due to um, process improvements and therefore increase in um, accurate um, counting, and um, but we typically see a boost um, following that. Slide nine, please. And so um, continuing on, just to give you some again a little bit more in depth um, understanding about impact and outcomes. In 2015 and 2016, there were six um, FOAs. And on average, they uh, increased their net income by 6%, increased days cash on hand by 16 days, and significantly um, improved their um, HCAP scores, patient satisfaction for um, uh, write your hospital and um, would recommend. Slide 10. So of the four um, FOAs in 2014, um, there were three that increased net patient revenue by 11%. Again, you see this over and over, increased days by cash on hand by 11 days. And um, there were three quality improvement projects that um, included CAHs where they also um, decreased the two PPS hospitals of that decrease their total um, readmissions rate. Um, so you can see that over time um, through, through these program years that the outcomes are very consistent. So for example, we target um, days cash on hand by at least 10 days. So we hope this provides you a better understanding of how SHIRT really impacts participating in hospitals' financial performance as well as quality of care. And to further illustrate the impact of the projects on the hospitals, I'm now going to turn it over to Rhonda, and she'll share more about individual hospital spotlights. Rhonda? Okay. Thank you, Bethany. Um, so I'm pleased to be here today with you guys. I'm Rhonda Vargas. Again, I'm um, program specialist, and uh, I work a lot with um, Bethany in co coordinating the projects, but I also look at the outcomes for the projects. Um, so uh, six months and 12 months after a hospital completes their project with us, we do phone interviews with them and begin to, to, um, to collect the measurable outcomes. And from there, we one of the things that, that comes from that is the Hospital Spotlight, which is an article that's in the Timely Transition Newsletter, which gives a little bit about the, um, the successes of the project, uh, what kinds of things were implemented, and uh, what the measurable outcomes were look, look like. So the next four slides are just a snapshot of those hospital spotlights. 
Um, the first one is Uvalde Memorial Hospital. They had a financial operational assessment back in 2017, and just recently we completed the outcomes conversations with them. Um, it's a hospital in Texas. And one of the things that they did, which was just really brilliant and innovative, is they took their SHRP project um, action plan, and they actually added a pillar to what they were using the Studer management tool um, with the different pillars for their pro for their hospital um, uh, strategy. And they actually added a pillar of their own that they called Stroud Water. And in this pillar, they tied up, up the uh, action plan and the consultant recommendations. And they did that so that they could stay very, very focused on making sure that they were continually um, uh, addressing the recommendations from the consultants. And so when I did their follow-up with them uh, late spring, they reported a net patient revenue increase of 3%, operating margin of 2.6. Um, they actually increased days cash on hand by more than 10 days, and their rate the hospital um, HCAP score went from 77 to almost 84 percentile. And you all know that that can be a very difficult to really impact. So they've made some excellent progress on actually all of their measures. Uh, the next one is in North Dakota. And that was Presentation Medical Center. And again, they also had a financial operational assessment last year when we looked at their outcomes. Again, Total margin increased by 3%, re net revenue by more than 2.5. Their days of cash, uh, cash on hand increased by 14 days. And then they had really focused um, as, as a way to impact these other measurable outcomes. They focused on uh, their swing bed, average daily expenses. And it went from less than one patient a day to 5.5, Five, which of course impacts a lot of the other measurable outcomes. Um, what, one of the things that was most significant, I think, about Presentation Medical Center is when I talked to their team, they were a firm believer, and I agree with this because I hear this over and over again as I interview hospitals, that they absolutely believe that their leadership is, um, their primary responsibility is to create a certain culture for the hospital, and that creating that culture then impacts outcomes. And so that that's what they live by, is this idea that we as leaders impact the culture and we're responsible for what happens in our hospital, and our culture is going to directly impact our outcomes. Um, and certainly their outcomes was a nice um, a measure of that. Um, the next one, the Delta Memorial Hospital, which is in Arkansas, they had a quality improvement project last year. And um, you can see on the right side, their outcomes included their ED transfer communication went from that only happening 76% of the time pre-project to 100% of the time post-project. Uh, patient satisfaction scores, um, again, the um, since there was so much focus on transition of care and discharge information, um, you can see that they had a strong improvement in patients feeling like they knew um, what they needed to do for recovery at home. And then even the patients who understood their care when they left the hospital improved from 42 to 49 percent. And those of you guys in hospitals who are looking at the HCAP scores, you know that for some reason that measure just is um, continuously kind of a really challenging measure to impact. Um, and I do want to say we, um, that Delta Memorial Hospital, one of, the, one of the things that we are very excited about is that we've been able to create two kind of video spotlights. Um, that we will be sending out to you all pretty soon. And this is one of the hospitals that had a spotlight. 
where it's uh, about a three to five minute um, video which talks about what they did, how they implemented things, what were the outcomes, um, and it includes the interviews of board members, community members, and even um, potentially some patients. Um, so anyway, please keep an eye out for that. We will send those out to you guys as soon as we have the final version. Uh, then the other hospital that this one also has a video spotlight, which will be coming out soon. This is Pender Community Hospital in Nebraska. And um, again, financial operational project. This was back in 2015. Um, incredibly strong uh, outcomes measures. They, they just did such a good job of staying just laser focused on implementing the consultant recommendations that were really going to get them the growth that they wanted. Um, and so they even surpassed their expectations, I think. You can see swing bed uh, increased to seven daily census, their rehab revenue increased. Um, one, one piece that was very, very admirable was they focused real strongly on their 340B program. Um, and put a lot of energy and time and effort into making that successful. And their net revenue is uh, um, nearly $2.1 million. So again, a very strong um, performer and one that you, I know you will enjoy watching the video as soon as those are released. So those are, those are some of the spotlights that come as a result of the um, SHIRT projects and us looking at the outcomes for those. I want to spend some time now talking to you guys about the Rural Hospital Toolkit and showing you how to navigate this, the toolkit to really get um, the best information from this that you possibly can. So just some background on the, the uh, Rural Hospital Toolkit for Transitioning to the Value-Based Systems. We just call it the Toolkit for short. Um, we created this about a little over three years ago. And um, prior to the um, Small Rural Hospital Transition Project, um, prior to that, there was a project called the Rural Hospital Performance Improvement Project, which um, several of you all that are on the call today, I think you participated because I'm recognizing a lot of your name. Um, and that, the RHPI project was based just in the Mississippi Delta state. Um, the SHIRT project then was created based on some of the processes that were found to be very successful. Um, and so we were gathering so many wonderful resources um, and stories and, um, you know, we were supporting all these projects and we were finding that there were so many things that the CEOs and the senior leadership were identifying that were, were working. And we knew that not every hospital had the opportunity to participate in a project. So we decided to create the toolkit which is really just a kind of a one-stop shopping of all of the different um, resources and tools that have been identified to be most helpful to hospitals in making performance improvement. And we all know that there are a lot of resources out there on the web. Uh, we could probably spend hours and hours searching those. But we really wanted to create an easy-to-access uh, toolkit that hospitals, that managers, that uh, supervisors in, in hospitals could go to and provide the resources in a quick and easy way that they needed. And so we created the toolkit, like I said, a little over three years ago. Originally, it was a PDF um, a document. And all of the tools were just embedded. The links were embedded in that. Uh, a couple years ago then, we, we changed that from a PDF version, and we created the portal, which is what, you're, what you see today. And some of you I know had used that. But the portal is just an easier 
way to access, access and navigate through um, these different um, these different topics. And so this is just a screenshot of the toolkit itself. Um, and then I'm going to go through and I'm going to use a couple of examples to show you how you could dig deeper and deeper into the toolkit. So, um, so the toolkit, one of the things that we did is we really wanted the industry's accepted best practices. And so, for instance, if we were looking for um, a tool around the bedside report, we know that there are a lot of different uh, 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 videos out there, a lot of different um, tools and documents on how to do really good bedside report. So what we did is instead of giving you five different tools where you still had to just struggle through those, um, we went, we tried to research the best of the best. And so we picked the one or the two um, that were the, the most highly recommended of the tools. And that's what we put on the toolkit. Again, our effort is to make this as easy and simple for you all to access the tools as you possibly could so that you're not having to spend hours and hours doing the research. We tried to do the research ahead of time for you. Um, so it's got the, the best um, practices that are out there in the industry. Um, it also pulls in the consultant recommendations from the projects that we have supported. Um, and includes specifically the ones that the hospitals have said, yes, these were, these were successful. These are the things that helped us to, uh, to have those measurable outcomes. Um, then we also incorporated feedback from the hospital administrators. Um, and all of this is to help prepare hospitals for that transition to a value-based uh, value system. That's the intention behind the entire toolkit. So the toolkit is really designed to help a lot of different um, kinds of agencies, whether it's the rural health network or it's the small rural hospital, state offices of rural health could access the toolkit, hospital associations. So it's really a good resource for a lot of different kinds of agencies. The toolkit includes eight major sections. So the toolkit itself is is if you could almost visualize, you have a toolkit with eight drawers. And so um, the eight drawers include one strategic planning, one just on leadership, board, employee, and community engagement, another drawer that is on physician and provider engagement alignment, another on population and health, financial operational strategies, revenue cycle and business office processes, quality improvement, and then lastly, the community care coordination and chronic care management. So your toolkit is divided into eight drawers, so to speak, um, where you would access your tools through by pulling out each of those drawers. Um, in addition to that, I'll come back later and talk about the first one up there, but that's a self-assessment self for transition planning. So let's say, for instance, um, oh, let me let me tell you about this before I'm, I'm so ready to tell you about some specific examples. But um, first of all, though, some of the resources that you'll find in each of those eight drawers are best practice tools. Um, where possible, we have included downloadable templates that you can automatically use so that you're not having to create your own template. So there are a lot of templates that are in um, Word or Excel so that you can begin to immediately use them and individualize them for your needs. Uh, zip files, we've got some metrics there around different uh, key performance um, and, uh, KPIs and quality measures. Uh, there are there are links to different webinar playbacks that um, we've provided on different uh, the different topics so you can use those for educational purposes, sometimes for frontline staff, sometimes for managers, supervisors, all the way up to C-suite. And then there are also links to the hospital spotlights that I was describing earlier with those four hospitals that I was um, talking to you guys about. 
so that that gives those real life examples of how folks have used these tools. So it's not just in theory that we think these would be good, but these are real life examples of ways that they've been used successfully. All right, so now how to, how to access the toolkit. So uh, what you see is a screenshot of the center's um, landing, or website, and um, you can see near the top there's uh, there are tab services, programs, events, resource library, and then just about the center. So if you click on the resource library, that will give you this screen. And then you can see on the right side are the different portals that we that we provide. And if you will go down to the almost to the last one, the Rural Hospitals Toolkit for Transitions to Value Based System, click on that, and that is going to take you then to the toolkit. And so now you see the landing page for the toolkit itself. Um, on the right side in that blue box are those eight drawers, so to speak, as well as that self-assessment um, that I'll talk about later. Um, so that's in that blue box on the right so that you can easily decide which one you want to go to. And then about halfway down, you see those same drawers, so to speak. Um, uh, below, so you can go either way to navigate to the section that you most want to take a look at. But let's say that you are you're wanting to impact um, your readmission rate, and you know that care transitions uh, is a huge piece that impacts readmissions. You're wanting to decrease readmissions. So you, you're wanting to find out what tools are out there to help impact the readmission rate, and specifically what kinds of things can help your hospital with care transitions. And so you would go to the quality improvement link, and if you click on that, that would take you to the quality improvement page. Um, and then the quality of improvement page, below you see it says uh, hospital best practices and recommended strategies. Uh, you see a number of links. These links actually will take you to a section in this drawer. And so you can see all the different topics we have for you under quality improvement. Quality focused culture, provider communication and patient engagement, quality and patient satisfaction scores, care management, discharge planning, all the way down to different examples of trainings and examples um, that could be helpful to you. And so, again, I said let, I'm interested in knowing more about tools that are going to help me prevent readmissions. And so I am going to click on care transitions and readmissions. That's going to take me to that landing page, and then you will see all the different resources, tools, um, opportunities that will help in, with this topic in particular. And so you can see, again, you know, it includes things like, um, you know, resources from AHRQ's Designing and Delivering Whole Person Transitional Care Guide, or um, AHRQ's uh, AHRQ's um, two readmission review. Um, uh, there's it gives you a link for um, a guide for the patient for when I leave the hospital. IHI's readmission diagnostic worksheet, um, the modified LACE tool, which a lot of our hospitals are successfully using when they're, um, especially the ones working on the QI project. Um, so it gives you a lot of different tools that you could just kind of take a look at. But let's say that you go on down and you see the IHI star. And again, IHI is certainly a very um, 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 highly respected um, um, source. And so again, we're looking for those really respected sources that um, are going to be the most helpful. And so let's say you decide, you know, I want to look more at that improving transitions from the hospital to home health care to reduce uh, avoidable rehospitalization. So you would click on that link, 
And that's going to take you directly then to IHI's how-to guide improving transition. And then you could begin to download their tools, um, the, the, the guide itself, um, and any of the templates that they have. So that's an example of how to move from just the bigger toolkit into quality improvement and then on down to a specific tool that you want that could impact your um, readmission rate. I want to give you one more example of how to navigate through the toolkit. So again, one of the other drawers that I just described over here on the right um, is strategic planning. And so with this one, let's say that you are in the process of developing strategy and you're wanting to know more how to create a strategy map and a balanced scorecard and then how to how to communicate those things with your stakeholders, with your board of directors. And so if you were to look at the strategic planning page, and again, underneath, you can see several sections, how to perform a transition self-assessment, um, completing a commu um, community health needs assessment, uh, using strategy map templates. But let's say then you decide that um, you are wanting to take a look at um, strategy map. And so you can click on that section. It takes you further down the page. And as, as you're looking at how to develop a strategy map, you see this tool, Value-Based Summit Strategic Planning Guides and Templates. Okay, well, that looks interesting. So let me click on that and see what that's about. And so then this will take you to um, the guide, which you can see it is, um, there's a PDF there, uh, about 58 pages which t t talks all about the strategic summit and how this summit came together with a lot of um, experts in the field to actually develop a balanced scorecard and strategy map template that any hospital could use. Whether you had access to consultants to come in to do this for you or not, um, this team actually created some um, templates that any hospital could use. And so it's like, okay, well, I want to know a little bit more about this guide so I can see the background and see if this is where, where I want to go. So you, you click on the guide, and it's going to take you to that the guide in particular, and then you could read through that PDF to find out more about how this was created, who created it, and what all it involves. And then so you look through that and say, okay, well, this looks interesting. I think I want to see a little bit more about these templates. So then you could click on the strategy map template, and it takes you to this, this screen, which is a Word document. Um, and again, the nice thing about this Word document is you can use it at will, and you can individualize it for your own needs. And so you can download the template, and then you could change. You can see it has different areas, learning and growth, internal processes, patients, partners, and community, and then financial. And it, the, the, between the guide and the template itself, it will lead you through the process of creating your own strategy map. And each of the sections in the strategy map then also can be um, changed so that it fits your culture, it fits your mission and vi uh, vision and values. Um, so that there is not just a one-size-fits-all, but this is just a very nice um, kind of a place to start as, um, uh, I don't know, kind of that, well, that template to really start from, and then you individualize it yourself. So that's, those are just two examples of how, a, how you might dive down deeper into the toolkit. And again, I just covered two of those sections, two of the eight sections. Um, so there are a lot of others, whether you're wanting to look more at care transitions or um, creating that partnership with the community and with your physicians. Um, so I really encourage you when you have a little bit of time to start just following some of 
those threads down and see where they take you. Because again, they'll take you to a lot of resources that are out there, but you're not having to go out and just doing a lot of searching on the internet for. Um, at least start with the toolkit and see if that takes you where you want to go. I did mention that in addition to those eight, eight sections of the toolkit, there's a self-assist assessment for transition planning. Now, uh, it may be that you're not looking for anything in particular and you're just kind of wondering, okay, where do I need to start first? You could go ahead and pull up the self-assessment for transition planning as a way to assess your hospital and the culture of your hospital to see where you're where are you strong and in what areas could you use some growth. Um, so it really just assesses your current capacity to look at those areas for development and it's kind of based on a system perspective. Um, or if you're just um, kind of new to this and you're like, well, you know, first I just want to assess my, my culture in general, um, then you could, you could start here. And again, you would just click on the self-assessment for transition planning. Um, and just and this shows you the seven areas that are targeted in the the self assessment. So if you've completed the self assessment in areas for improvement regarding leadership, strategic planning, patients, partners, and communities, these seven different areas: workforce and culture, um, impacts and outcomes, measures. Um, so it's just a nice way to um, to kind of t assess your current your current um, state at the hospital, and really I encourage you guys if you're going to do the self assessment, think about having several folks in your leadership teams to fill this out, just and then have some discussions to see whether or not there's agreement or disagreement about the functioning of these in these seven areas because again this could give you some great information about different people's perspectives about how well we're functioning because it may be that the CEO has one belief it may be that a frontline manager sees it differently so it's a good way to start a conversation about um, where we are as a hospital or an organization but if you were to take the self-assessment, this is what one of the pieces looks like. This is under the section of leadership. You can see it's very easy and quick to do. Um, uh, four possible responses, all the way from strongly disagree to strongly agree. And you would go through and just um, answer each of these items and um, for each of the sections and then submit your your assessment, um, what you would get immediately then is an email back that gives your overall score. So out of a possible 116 points, and the higher the better, um, this organization had 84. So that just gives you a general idea on your score um, across the board in those all seven areas. Uh, but then the other thing that you will get back is a breakdown for each of those seven sections. Um, and it will give you your score in each of the items that were underneath that, that section. Um, so this can give you an idea of, uh, you know, where are we stronger and where are we needing some work. Um, this will also point you toward the piece of the toolkit that could be most helpful. And so if, for instance, something comes up around strategy, and that's one of the lower scoring areas of the self-assessment, it's going to automatically link you to the toolkit section on strategy. Um, so we've really, tr again, tried to make this as easy to access as possible and as solution-oriented as possible, because it's one thing for us to know where we are in different areas, but it's like, but then the next question is, okay, now what? So this is a way to automatically take you to the section which might provide you the most support um, if that's where you're wanting to, to go next. So that is an overview of the toolkit, how to, how to navigate through. Again, lots of, um, lots of resources, tools, uh, past webinars, hospital spotlights, a lot of real-time 
um, success stories so that it's not just in theory what might be helpful, but it's things that people have found to actually be helpful and are reporting that these are the things that are impacting the success of our hospital. Um, but, um, and the other thing for you all to know is that we are constantly updating this. And so about every quarter we go through and we are looking for new resources um, and um, assessing whether something is out of date. Um, so that's the toolkit. And again, just can be used on demand by anybody in any agency, um, regardless of um, a person's title. Um, but again, but you know, so it's kind of nice to pass some of this on to your clinical folks to say, hey, you might want to take a look at these two sections. You know, it might be that your financial business office folks are interested in a different section. So there's something for everybody, I think, in the toolkit. Uh, so I am going to pass this back to Bethany, who's going to talk a little bit about the upcoming application period. Um, and then we will have some time at the end for questions. Also, though, if you have questions about this toolkit or anything you're hearing, please feel free to type those in the chat box so that we can be capturing those as we go along. Bethany? Thanks, Rhonda. And great job explaining how to access topic-specific um, best practice tools. Uh, the toolkit is just a rich resource uh, for any hospital, clinic leader, and manager. So we'd like to take a moment here and invite any shared eligible hospital to submit an application for the 2018-2019 program year. The shirt application will open uh, September 26th and close on October 24th. Uh, we invite you to preview the application questions and uh, go to this website um, to learn more about the process to prepare now um, so that you can submit an application. And so a little bit about uh, eligibility. Um, it's open to both critical access hospitals and PPS hospitals that are 49 beds and less and located in a HRSA-defined rural area or fairly designated persistent poverty county. Um, and you are welcome to go to, um, again, the website. There is a, a list of eligible hospitals. If your hospital is not included on that list, then please contact us so that we can review and confirm your hospital's eligibility. The selection process um, will choose nine hospitals to receive either a financial operational assessment um, or a quality improvement project. Um, at least three hospitals will be selected for both the FOA or QI projects, and funding is used to support the on-site consultation. So hospitals can request either the FOA or QI projects. Uh, the financial operational assessment is really designed to um, improve financial performance, but has a huge focus on um, quality of care as well, um, patient satisfaction, and because um, moving forward under value-based um, system of the future, population health of the future, of course you know um, your payment is tied to your value. So it identifies strategies that will help you improve financial efficiencies, and improve um, quality of care. The quality improvement project assesses um, utilization review, discharge planning, care coordination, helps you to think about how to um, implement um, processes to improve transitions of care. Um, but again, it is also has a strong focus on um, financial performance for the very same reason, because uh, in the future, your value is tied to your quality. So just overall, um, the on-site technical assistance that is provided through the SHARP project really focuses on um, financial performance improvement, um, increasing that operational efficiencies, um, increased, creating a quality culture, one that really promotes um, excellence, 
uh, throughout the entire organization. A strong focus on aligning and partnering with your physicians and providers, aligning services with um, meeting your community needs, um, and really strategizing um, how best to um, position your organization for the future and prepare for population health as well. So previously selected hospitals can reapply in alternating years. Um, the hospitals um, that have previously participated in the program um, simply cannot um, apply in consecutive years. So to summarize, um, all previously selected hospitals, with the exception of um, the 2017 and 2018 um, hospitals, um, can apply this upcoming year. And this process um, helps to um, ensure that the selected hospitals have had adequate time to really implement these consultant recommendations, adopt these best um, practices, and, and uh, adopt strategies, um, and, and work with us post-project to demonstrate um, value and um, uh, measurable outcomes from the projects, as well as um, it also provides an opportunity for other um, unserved hospitals to um, receive on-site consultation. So uh, again, you can go to the website and you can preview the questions. So right here um, is an example. You can download the application questions along with the self-assessment questions. So please note, um, a very important part um, for the short application is that it does consist of two parts. Uh, the um, online application itself, um, as well as the self-assessment. And um, these are just, this is just a, a direct link um, to take you there. Um, and we're just trying to show you here on this um, screenshot that um, on the opening day, the application and the link to the self-assessment self uh, will be will open, and it will be located here at the bottom of the of the page. And to submit a full and successful application, we have a few hints for you. Um, so first, again, really want to emphasize, please complete both the online application and self-assessment. Um, and all hospitals, both PPS and critical access hospitals, should complete all questions, regardless if you think the question is applicable to you or not. Now, please do not leave any um, blanks in your application. Um, any missing sections or, inf or information will be considered incomplete and will not be scored and will um, submit it back to you. Um, but the good news is you can um, always resubmit an application or self-assessment. So um, if you feel like if something happened to it, it's not quite right, your answer is not quite right, you can always uh, resubmit a new one. And we're here just, again, trying to be as transparent as possible. Um, we've got some helpful hints here, um, particularly, again, emphasizing please do not leave any blanks, regardless if the question asks um, if yes or if no, um, please answer it regardless. Um, and even if you are a PPS hospital or a CAH, if you think the question um, is really more appropriate for somebody else or it's not really applicable to you, please explain why or put the answer in there. And then lastly on this, when you're reviewing the um, application questions, if you have um, any concern about that question or you just don't really understand um, what we're really asking, um, what is the question is really expecting, please give us a call. We're happy to talk through that um, with you. We want all the hospitals to submit the strongest application as possible. And because the application actually um, is designed um, 
to, to identify those hospitals that demonstrate strong leadership and, and um, indicate a commitment for utilizing resources effectively. Um, we're, it really targets um, those hospitals that are willing and able um, to work with the center, um, particularly post-project, um, to demonstrate um, outcomes. Um, and at the end of the report, at the end of the consultation, you know, to have that real commitment to say you're going to continue to work to implement these um, consultant recommendations. And the consultation are um, uh, divided up into, you know, these steps. Um, and the application, again, is really looking for that hospital that will um, take the action steps to implement these best practices, uh, complete project activities, and participate in four uh, learning collaboratives with other selected hospitals throughout the year. This learning collaborative is really designed designed to assist the hospital teams with developing a strategy map, a balanced scorecard, and um, applying the consultant's best practices and transition strategies in a meaningful way and help um, structure it so it's useful um, to the hospital team and it really further supports their action plan more long term. And if you'd like to know more about the um, consultation process, the um, post-project tracking. Um, please uh, download these documents here. And we even have a handout that estimates um, um, time for executive and management team um, to participate. We estimate that um, about um, 16 hours is what's really required for executive and management team members um, to participate um, all program year. Um, and it's about 17 hours for the CEO. Um, and again, that's for the entire, all the activities for the entire program year. Um, the real commitment is um, at the end of the action plan where then you really start to make that effort to implement these uh, recommendations. And this is um, activities that you should be doing really anyway for ongoing performance improvement. So we invite you to review the application. Um, please contact us if you have any questions. We want um, all the hospitals to submit a strong, um, successful application. We're glad to assist you in any way possible, including um, the toolkit. Um, if if you need assistance in um, accessing um, information or topic-specific area, um, please give us a call, email us, and we're happy to um, step you through it and even pr provide your team a, a tutorial on how to utilize the toolkit. Um, with that, I believe we'll turn it um, back over to Kim and uh, take any kind of questions um, that you have. So if you have Thank any you questions, so much. just uh, yep, go ahead, Kim. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Bethany and Rhonda. If there are any questions, feel free to type them into the chat box right now, or you can press star two to unmute online. The recording of this webinar, along with any slides, will be available on our Health Webinar Playback page later today. At this time, I ask that you complete the short online assessment for this webinar using the links on the screen.